Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews. We're like a book club where people hate reading. This month we're doing Grab Bag, so James picked the movie Shoot 'em Up, made in 2007, along with Legion Season 1, Episode 1. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Hello. and Ryan Preston. Here's a description of Shoot 'em Up, made in 2007. A man named Mr. Smith delivers a woman's baby during a shootout and is then called upon to protect the newborn from the army of gunmen. But, but time out. Nobody called him. Nobody talked to him. He just grabbed the baby and ran. His life would have been a lot easier if he just said, fuck the kid. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like the movie. I give it a three out of five. I do like the fact there's not a lot of explosions in this movie. Usually with guns, there's always explosions. Um, or car wrecks. Yeah, but there's no big giant booms like there usually is in a Hollywood movie. Like, you hit a gas tank or an oil tank or whatever the fuck it was. Usually it's followed by an explosion in most yeah. Hollywood movies. Blow all the pilot lights out, turn on the gas, um, light a time flare. Paul Giamatti right. sure. paid a perfect jerk. Oh, yeah. Um, so strong three to five for me. James? You know, um, this one will always be one of my favorites, so it's got to be a four out of five. Um I mean, I, I just love the fact of how straightforward this movie is. Right? Um, I, I am I am absolutely a fan as well. Um, it, it's It's got some of my all-time favorite scenes and one of my girlfriend's all-time favorite scenes with the blinker. Oh, but... I see. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, so, I mean, solid four to five. I mean, it, it landed all the things that it was going to. I'm a fan of the genre that it was, that it was kind of spoofing in general. But... Um, it, the the inspiration for it was um, a, a Chow Yun Fat movie, hmm. um, and I can't remember the one that it, that it was, but uh, there was a scene where he saved a baby, and just based off of that, he's like, "Oh, well, what about a whole movie where a guy's running around with a baby like a football?" So, question for you guys: Death by teacup or death by carrot? See, he was pretty badass with those carrots. I mean, yeah, maybe like they're that. organic, and that's why they went through the back of the dude's head. <laughs> I thought you know? that was hilarious. Just like, it's like, wow, death no, by I, vegetable. I'm just for the for the record, take take it take it from me. You you want GMOs when it comes to stabbing somebody with carrots? That, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> you want those fibers compacted? I yeah, wish you want the big beefy ones. You know. And I do the shitty organic farming tiny ass carrot thing. <laughs> I do love the fact that they carried his love for carrots in the one scene with Paul Giamatti when they were doing the Looney Tunes impressions. Oh, yeah. I was like, that was pretty good. Um, you know, being a comedy, anyways. So this this movie went out of left field. Well, that's the the whole thing. I mean, this movie is a cartoon. This is Bugs Bunny and Elmer fucking fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I... and meets uh, a very interesting hooker. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to jump in this one. You know, uh, my first thing is, like, I mean, it's all in the title, what you would expect out of this movie. It really yeah. is. I mean, I, and that's one of the things that I love about this one is shoot them up. That, that's yeah. literally what the whole entire movie is about. And, and the <laughs> only and the only backstory about any of the characters is supposition by Paul Giamatti. Yeah, and it's not even verified by, by Clive <laughs> Owen. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is, like, where the mindless action films of the early to mid 90s was leading up to. I mean, you got humor, you got guns, you got death, you got crappy puns, a cheesy bad guy. I mean, it's just fun. And I yeah. mean, even he's just cynical and hates everything. And I love that too. I mean, like when he's <laughs> driving along and, and you know, he's like <coughs> doing his blinker, like we kind of mentioned before, or the asshole parks in the handicap spot. I love it. You know, he's like, you know what I hate? Everything. Oh, by the way, I don't hate you yet. That, that was another really good little uh, scene. It's like after he drove away, Paul Giamatti's character came out yeah. and looked at the handicap sign and looked at the ground and just kind of smiled. Yeah. <laughs> and this movie's really quotable and hilarious. Like my favorite little bit of tidbit I found was the lady got spanked by Clive Ovo and was really excited about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's hilarious. Yeah. You you could actually almost see it on her face. Like I'm not totally against this. And I oh by the way, I also love the fact the hooker's initials are DQ. That made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah, the whole the whole movie was very self aware, you know, and, and and very fun. Um, but it really is that throwback to the '90s action movies. I mean, when I was a kid. 
you know, I was used to watch movies with my parents, and they didn't really try to try to censor me on the kind of stuff that we watched. But my mom didn't like action movies, so when she was out of town or something, my dad would look at me like, hey, let's go get a good shoot 'em up movie. And that was literally the term that everyone used to describe oh, yeah. Yeah. this type of movie. So like James said, when it comes out, you you know right on the face of it yeah. what and you're this... getting yourself to. But then the humor that's that's laid into it also, it's it's not just a bunch of people dying. It's, you know, really good one-liners and, oh, and yeah. awesome characters like uh, uh, Mr. Smith and, and yeah. uh, I can't think of. Giamatti's character's name. Oh, I can't either right now. Off the top of my head, and it, this uses pretty much every action movie cliche, um, like being able to hit everybody no matter what angle. Almost unlimited ammunition. Magazines <laughs> popping out of nowhere for oh, that yeah. Walter PPK. Yeah, um, that made me laugh. It's like, wait a minute, where did he get that extra two magazines? Because you yeah. literally see him changing them. Yeah, and that um, was one of the things I, I like appreciate. That he called it a piece of shit because it jammed. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I mean this. This one with the title, I mean, it reminds me, and this may be why it's got such a fond spot in my heart, is the fact, I mean, it reminds me of Payback. I mean, a right. very simple title, yeah. and you knew what you were getting. The guy's going out for revenge. He's paying these assholes back. See, unlike, I would say this one is kind of like Payback, except for the fact that I think that he's really just doing it to do it. Yeah. He's almost like a broke, poor... Uh, uh, Hero. Yeah. It's like, well, much. I haven't killed anybody lately. These guys look fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like I have nothing else to do right now, so I guess I'll go do this. And yeah, he's apparently really much. angst-ridden, so it helps him get out his anger, like hating guys with ponytails. <laughs> and they blew the ponytail off the back of his head. That was awesome. <laughs> um, God. Yeah, I, dude, I mean, they really did do every trope you've ever seen in an action movie, almost in fucking order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, Clive Owen plays a character that that he's really easy to love, even though he's cynical. He's a jerk. He doesn't really care about much, you know. No, yeah, especially not caring about giving a baby permanent hearing damage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, my favorite scene is when he's got the baby in in the bulletproof vest, and then he goes sliding down the things, holding the baby and shooting. <laughs> Oh, I mean, yeah, there was a hilarious. lot of sliding and shooting. Oh, yeah. I mean, the oil slick that he slid on. That was a lot of right. oil. I was actually expecting sure. him to light it on fire or something. Um, the other scene, I don't know why I thought it was funny, but just his relationship with that hooker was <laughs> when he walked out of the pawn shop. Where'd she go? And he saw that guy leaning oh, yeah. up and slammed his fingers. And she's like, you know, it's like, what are you doing? Making money. Yeah. It's like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. What else is she going to do? <laughs> It leaves the baby in a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was, there was a lot of leave the baby right here while I do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> but what's great is is that was a real newborn. Yeah. You know, obviously not yeah. for the for the sliding through yeah. things and shooting, but but like the the scenes that was a, that was they just got a newborn. Yeah. I, yeah. According to IMDb, they actually timed it right, so it'd be it'd be born by the time they needed it. Oh, wow. it's like, that's right. hilarious. They, they found a mother that was going to deliver about the same time as uh, as the shooting began. Yeah. By the way, from my personal experience, I wonder how late that kid was. Because <laughs> you can't really plan a, a movie around somebody giving birth. Uh, I mean, unless it's a C-section. <laughs> True. <clears throat> and, and the skydiving scene. Oh, my God. I, I mean, oh, it's so funny. Oh my I was God. thinking, like, right you know, off the it, bat, I mean, this movie it, doesn't believe in ricochets. And yeah, those no, rounds are going somewhere. But yeah, well, like how he fired that, uh, what the, forgot the handgun, but in the airplane, in the belly of the, the oh, airplane, yeah. just shot the dude right in the head. Yeah. I like the fact he kills a senator or something, and nobody ever goes after him. Like, eh, well, the dude was a douche. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's kind of how they treated that whole section. It's like, eh, the, we don't really care. I, I wish they explained, did they ever explain who Paul Giamatti actually was and he worked for? No. Uh, well, they made it. They he worked for the the gun manufacturers, because it was almost like he was the uh, like the grandson, the like the no, like the great great grandfather of the character from Mad Max. Oh, you know, because of all the babies. Yeah, it was just like, what the hell? All these children and the nurses and bottles <laughs> and sperm samples. <laughs> yes, what is happening? Oh, the ice cream He's is a melting. very generous donor. <laughs> God, the movies. 
<laughs> the movie's hilarious. My wife wasn't a, de- a giant I didn't fan think she of this was going to be. <laughs> um, she actually was... Was Cursing saying, my name the yeah, whole time. Well, actually, the last couple of James's picks, like, who picked James? Damn it. <laughs> <sighs> I've never heard her sigh somebody's name so much in my life. <laughs> I might have to actually pick some good ones for her. <laughs> wait until Ryan picks tentacle porn, tentacle porn again. Uh, we're doing Dark City? <laughs> hey, I, I, th- I think I'm going to be uh, uh, vindicated on that one in the, uh, in the future. <laughs> I, I, I in the way distant future. <laughs> in the year three thousand. I mean, because that in Buffalo sixty six got wow. to some down marks. I'll be completely Conan reference. Yeah, I'll be completely honest. I'd rather watch Buffalo sixty six. I actually kind of like that movie compared to Super. <laughs> but I also wow. I also hate Rain Wilson with a passion of a thousand. Yeah, I, I mean, you can't get raped by a chick that hot. It just doesn't happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Um, oh, the the other part I, I really really loved was the ending. Oh. Just, just because like he literally hurt everybody. That's like a bunch of things he hated. He just like blew off the dude's earring, shot yeah. the dude in the <clears throat> was it the foot? Yeah. Um, broke the glass of the guy slurping his milkshake. Which, by the way, how do you actually <laughs> slurp a milkshake? Uh, you got to get down to the end of it first. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's got to be something like that. Um, God, it was just such a funny movie, and this is kind of definitely an action movie spoof, which I'm totally for yeah. of them doing. I want like an M Night Shyamalan spoof, not him doing it, but everybody spoofing him, uh. and not like in those stupid, uh, scary, not so scary movies. Like actually, something good and fairly intelligent. So never mind. Yeah, don't make I, it. I, I, I don't think you're holding out much. Uh, Going to be holding out a lot of hope for that. Oh yeah. No, I, well, I'm hoping. I'm holding out as much hope as M Night Shyamalan stopped directing movies. Well, I mean, I, I would if I was to pick a director that could actually do a really <laughs> funny and hilarious spoof off of uh, Shyamalan, Lollipop, Ding Dong, whatever the hell I want to call him, um, would be Mel Brooks. Don't, can't think yeah, of anyone like, else. Well, also- that would the thing be able about Shyamalan it. is there's not anything to his movies other than average movie, wear a little twist at the end. So that's the only way you can spoof it. Well, I'm have... thinking, and his and his twist is so predictable. So we we'll we'll talk about this. I was saying maybe the Wayans games. brothers as well could probably do a decent. No, one, but they haven't done a decent film in the, so long. The problem is they're responsible for no, those. I'm not nonsense. talking about white chicks. I'm talking about the first scary movie. That one still sucked. That was still it was pretty funny for what it was. Let me get that with my strong hand. <laughs> I, 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 I gotta admit, I got it was, right on that one. It was pretty funny in how one of the Wayans brothers died in that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. In the bathroom. Uh, yeah, they're. I mean, they're, they had glory funny hole. moments, and, and then what about you know, uh, "Don't Be a Menace" to South Central with drinking juice in the hood? I mean, come on. Yeah, for sure. But see, that's and that is thing. a title for people who don't okay. know. <laughs> You have a a, a a black growing up in the hood movie. There's there's tropes throughout that movie that you can make fun of throughout the spoof. But Shyamalan is just regular movie twist. Yeah. Regular movie so twist. before we get yeah we're gonna get on a tangent here <laughs> anymore. Like I said, what well, we might talk about this more. Yeah, um, we have to on the next show. See about our ratings though. So I'm um, I'm still gonna give it a three point five. I found oh, it entertaining well. for me. It doesn't have a whole lot of rewatchability. I do like some of the random crappy pulls, like firing uh, empty, <laughs> firing bullets with no gun just by holding it to a fireplace. Not really possible. Not one hundred percent possible. Uh, still pretty good. Yeah. Um, Ryan. Um, stick sticking with before. Um, I, I'm a I'm a fan of the genre, and I, I like what they did with it. And yeah, not you can't show this to everybody. Yeah, but uh, it, yeah. it is a fun movie, even for people who might not <clears throat> only watch action movies. You know. So. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sticking with a four. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this is a fun movie with a lot of rewatchability. So do you love us, hate us? We do have a Facebook page. How about telling us if there's a movie you want us to do or if there's some interesting movie news you'd like us to talk about. The other thing is you can now catch us on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. So we did Season 1, Episode 1 of the new TV show Legion, and it feels kind of like an independent movie, and it's very disjointed. You know, um, 
I, I kind of went into this one pretty cool. I knew what, what was what it it was about, and um, you know the first like forty five minutes of it really dragged. So and um, but I do like how the how they went so in depth on what was going on. So the question is: at the end of it, is it going to be like Shutter Island and the end of the Bob Newhart show? Uh no, no. Um, no, it absolutely isn't. Um, this is this is part of the really the extended Marvel, Marvel yeah. universe. Um, it's it's part of the New Mutants, yeah. Which I never really got into when when they when they came out. So I only had a very very simple knowledge of, yeah. of who Legion Same is. Here. Okay, so I've never heard uh, of it. But Legion yeah. is major spoiler alert here. If anybody's looking into seeing this. In three, two, one. It's Charles Xavier's son. Yeah. Is it the one he had with Moira Moira Taggart? No, not not with McTaggart. No, it was it was another woman who he had uh, sort of had an affair with. Yeah. Uh, at, at a certain point, she hid the pregnancy from him, and he he never knew. Hmm. Um, but yeah, he's Xavier's son, and he's kind of insane, but also the, like the reason he's called Legion. Uh, is because he has so many multiple personalities controlling different powers that he has. Yeah, uh, it's actually heard really that. interesting. But I've never um, heard of the character that's interesting. I mean, I what about you, Ryan? Like once I figured out exactly where they were going with it, and I mean, weren't you? Were did you get excited? I, yeah, I was very excited, but also I was really intrigued watching the first forty-five minutes. Yeah. Um, about twenty minutes in, you get this weird little taste of like. Oh, this is gonna get crazy in a in a big way, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah. But I was I was totally in with the how crazy is he? What does he know? What does he doesn't? Uh, what does he not know? And then when you see the interview happening with the uh, the, the 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 guys, the 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 brown version of Anthony Jessel, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they so much they for not saying that on air a little bit for the rest of the season and. It gives you this peak that that really piqued my interest. Yeah, you know? I mean, how cool was it when he shut, when he got the pencil to go right in the dude's cheek? That was pretty badass. Yeah. That was good stuff. I was amazed how disjointed that the first forty five well, minutes are. But, I mean, I know why they. But do that goes it, but into I, his psyche, really. I was the thing <clears throat> that was curious is how many people complained about that. That's, oh, there was a lot. Um, see, I didn't know this was a a Marvel thing. Is this on an Alphabet Channel? Um, no, no, FX. Um, no, it, sci-fi. Okay, because I was trying to figure out, because I'm surprised this isn't a Netflix Wait, or... I think a, it's sci-fi. Right? You know, another online purveyor. Um, I'm looking. Okay. I do love some of the random stuff, like the, the part where he woke up on that one chick's body type. Oh, thing. yeah. That, that was hilarious. Yeah. Especially the fact when you walk up to the mirror going... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, for people who, who are just going to come into this cold, I don't think it's a good one to show them cold without kind of giving them a hint as to what's going on. So yes, I, I mean, I had, a, I had, I knew where the, the show was going to go, but it, but it was kind of coming in cold, not really knowing exactly what to See, expect. When you picked so. it, I had no idea this was, I yeah. didn't know it was a Marvel property. I didn't even know this was based off of anything. So that when I watched it, it was just kind of like, this is very weird, kind oh, yeah. of, vaguely a little bit i can see a little bit of like clockwork orange a little bit of this it's like i'm i'm interested in where the series goes but the first episode to me i definitely wasn't a fan of i'll definitely have to watch the second episode just um, to see where they actually take it oh that's fine i mean i actually i am i am already really really looking forward it's fx by the way is uh, it really fx okay or do it i i was surprised how immediately endeared i was to to dan stevens to david to david holler um the character you know i, I thought uh, the uh, the guy that played him dan stevens was was great and immediately likable and you're kind of immediately on his side and also with all the the sort of as john put it the sort of the disjointed imagery you're in his head yeah you know in a very interesting way and not in a um, uh, a really like where you feel like you're going crazy too, but yeah, you feel like I, you understand where he's coming from. The, the guy reminded me a lot of Topher Grace from that '70s show. <laughs> I don't know why, but the whole time I'm like, "Wow, the, um, yeah, a little bit." <clears throat> just kind of, gee, mom, can I stay in my old room for a bit? Um, well, that's the thing is, you know, you almost kind of like him acting the way he does because he's like, "Look, I, I might be crazy. I understand that, you know." And it's it's almost how. 
you know, I, I think uh, if, if somebody told us that we were crazy and they gave us evidence of that, I'd be like, well, shit, I guess you're right. You know, I, I guess I am crazy, you know, and so it was, I, again, I, I really kind of immediately liked him. I'm a huge fan of Aubrey Plaza, uh, so I was happy to see her doing doing TV like that. So we definitely give this a much uh, a must see, even though a little bit of caveat. Um, if you're having somebody watch them, give them a heads up of how odd the first episode is. Yeah, and you next, I, I don't know about that. I, I I would actually say throw them in cold. Don't even tell them it's Marvel. You know what I mean? Mm. Especially for people who might be a little a little watered down with all of the superhero things. I would say if they're a, if they're a fan of the genre, throw them at head first. But if it's like, say, your girlfriend who's not really into these type of movies, there's a good chance she's going to hate you for making her uh, watch I, this. I, I disagree. I think that after that first 40 minutes or so, you're, you're kind of intrigued in a way that's not in the superhero side of everything. Mm, well, we'll have to test it on somebody. So, ladies and gentlemen, electrodes. next week is Ryan's pick. So, Ryan, you're up. Okay. Um, I, I know we're all – we've just watched a thousand people get shot the last few weeks of us picking movies. So, I, I tr- decided to dial it back to where only a handful of people get shot. Um, I'm picking a Collateral. Uh and I just had the damn thing up, and I don't remember when it was... I'm just impressed played. James isn't picking for you this time <laughs> after the last <laughs> month of that. Um, do well, you have I a TV show? I some thought 20 minutes before, before <laughs> I did this. Um, uh, yeah, so Collateral 2004. Um, for, for a handful of reasons. One, I like Michael Mann. He's, he's the uh, 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 director. Um, done things like, like Heat, Public Enemies, um, shit, Last of the Mohicans. Uh, been, been around the game a long time, but... It's interesting to watch one Tom Cruise taking mm. a back seat to another actor. Oh, that's right. This you know, one, you're okay. definitely not used to seeing him as a, as a supporting role, and he very much is in this movie to Jamie Foxx. As he jump on um, his couches. And I love Jamie Foxx when he plays a regular guy. <laughs> yeah, he does a good job. Interesting <laughs> cast. Uh, Tom Cruise, Jamie Foxx, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, Mark Rufio. Everybody knows him as Mark a police. Uh, is Hulk interesting cast? Holy crap, Bruce McGill. Huh? Yeah, hell yeah, good old Bruce McGill. Damn. Yeah. So I'm cops Bruce McGill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I just like I haven't seen I haven't seen that dude in forever. Uh, if I remember correctly, he was on MacGyver. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, oh, we didn't do a TV show. Ryan, did you want to pick one, or do you want me to pull one up? Um. Just pull yeah, it I didn't, I didn't okay. get that much. So we're going to do Labyrinth, which is a two-part mini-series, and we're going to be doing episode 1.1. 1. 1. Fuck, I should have thought of something. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, ladies and gentlemen, next week we're doing the movie Collateral along with episode 1.1 1. 1 of the TV mini-series Labyrinth for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.